Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to everyone and welcome to our folks who will be viewing this afternoon on YouTube. We're always glad to have those folks uh, join us also. Um, pastor is away, well perhaps on her way home, had a big, had a happy wedding on Thursday and so um, they had a good time as I understand. Um, and uh, we welcome t uh, today our guest preacher, our uh, Executive Presbyter, Reverend Boswell. Mm -hmm. Thank you for ha coming today. And are there any announcements from anyone here? Let us pray. Prepare our hearts, O God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voice your own, that hearing we may also obey your will. Amen. I'm going to read Psalm 48 this morning. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, is the joy of all the earth. Mount Zion is the far north, the city of the great king. Within her citadels, God has shown himself a sure defense. For lo, the kings assembled. They came on together. As soon as they saw it, they were astounded. They were in panic. They took flight. Trembling took hold of them there. Anguish as a woman in travail. By the east-west, those, as, as the east wind, thou dost shatter the ships of Tarsh. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, which God establishes forever. We have thought on thy steadfast love, O God, in the midst of thy temple. As thy name, O God, so they praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is filled with victory. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the daughters of Judah rejoice because of thy judgments. Walk about Zion, go around her, number her towers, consider her ramparts, go through her citadels, that you may tell the next generation that this is God, and God forever and ever. He will be our God forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Our second scripture is taken from the book of 2 Corinthians, Paul's letter, uh, verses 2 through 10. Listen to God's word to us this day. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows. And I know that such a person whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but... He said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before I start, I do want to thank you, and I 
thank Karen for the asking me to come and be with you all today. It's fun to be able to come and preach, especially when it's something fun going on for the pastor, um, like a wedding. Um, I've jumped in when folks have been sick, so this is a nice uh, this is a nice change of pace in that regard. Um, some of you do know me. Um, I am your general presbyter and stated clerk since last October. So uh, I haven't even been here a year yet, and I'm still getting my feet wet um, as to all the work that we are doing. But one of the things that both I and my associate, uh, Nancy Mianyao, um, are trying to do is visit with as many people as we can because we know that as Presbyterians we are a connectional church and the way to be connectional is to be relational and that means getting to know you. So um, I hope that this is just the beginning of a long and fruit rela fruitful relationship with all of us um, as we continue all together working for God's kingdom in this world. Um, some of you know that I most recently come from Buffalo, New York, and I will tell you that their weather has been worse than ours. Um, and, uh, and so that's the hot, steamy stuff, not the snow. So, um, you know, somebody posted a picture of the snow and, and said, remember this? And uh, we hope that they're feeling cool. Um, but some of you will say, oh, well, somebody said to me, oh, well, we got a Yankee. And I said, well, no, you didn't. Um, I'm originally from Northern Virginia. And of course, I know people say that is not really Virginia either. But um, I did grow up there. But my dad grew up just outside of Lexington, Virginia on a farm in Fancy Hill. And um, I have roots there. In fact, I was able to go preach at uh, New Monmouth not too long ago and found my grandmother's records there and was so excited to find those because uh, she died well before I was born and so it was nice to find that um, part of the family. So I'm headed into Ancestry.com and to look at all of those long, um, those roots that I have here in, in Virginia and so um, just wanted to let you know a little bit about me that way. So it is, it's wonderful to be here with you. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So the passage I just read, at times I think is hard to follow because Paul talks about himself sort of in the third person. I'm going to tell you about this person who had this revelation and was taken up into the third heaven, but in reality I'm really talking about myself. That's the thing, is that he wants to tell what happened but doesn't really want to admit that he's talking about himself, and yet he wants everyone to know that he is talking about himself. And I know that that sentence sounded just as convoluted as the passage from the scripture. Paul was confessing that he had had an experience, a vision of some sort that he couldn't talk about because the revelations in it were not to be repeated to mortals. I couldn't help but think that it's like having that friend who found out information about something that makes them one of the cool kids in school, only they aren't allowed to tell you what it is, but they want you to know that they're part of a cool kids table. Yeah, I've thought about some, some folks that I knew along those ways, that, that way. Then Paul confesses that even though he could boast about what he knows, he will not because he doesn't want anyone to think that he thinks better of himself than he should. And then he adds that to make sure that he doesn't think too highly of himself, he admits that he has an affliction that reminds him that he is not sufficient unto himself. That can be a difficult idea for those of us who like to think we can take care of ourselves. It can be hard for those of us who are used to helping others rather than receiving help ourselves. It's hard for those of us to think that our own hard work has gotten us to where we are and that we are not beholden to anyone else. But like Paul, we receive reminders that we are not the coolest kid in town. 
that we are not the end all be all. We receive reminders that keep us grounded. And I think about the times when I was in seminary and came home and led worship. And just like any child of the church, you're done leading worship and people come up and tell you what a wonderful job you did. And then there was Mrs. Metcalf, my mother's very best friend, who always had some suggestion to make me a better worship leader. I always think about that as popping the balloon of my possibly inflated head. You know, and it happened not too long ago with one of my sons, who is an actor. He sang at church, and of course he was great, and plenty of people told him how wonderful he was and how they cried, and, and of course I was the one who made the suggestion of how it could be better. And he loves me, and just like I loved Mrs. Metcalf. We need those folks in our lives to help keep us grounded. What speaks to me in the scripture is that like us, Paul, even Paul, had to come to terms with the fact that he could not rely solely upon himself and what he alone could do. He, like all of us, had weaknesses had things that he needed to be reminded of to help keep him grounded in the fact that God in Jesus Christ is the one that was working in him, through him, and for others. God worked with Paul as God works with us in our weaknesses, or what we think are our weaknesses. Sometimes God takes those things that we think, well, are those weaknesses, and shows us how we can truly use them for his kingdom in helping others. It is God's grace through Jesus Christ that is sufficient for us to be about the work that God calls us to do. We may think that we have nothing to give, nothing to contribute to the greater good. We can come, we can be in the pews, we can give our tithe, we can, we can do that, but nah, I don't know how else God is calling God is calling. God calls all of us. And God may be calling us to work where we have our employment and how we are treating the folks that we work with. Or there might be somebody there who needs to hear that they are loved, that they are cared for. We don't know how God is calling each and every one of us until we listen. We are all called. And that is because God works in us and through us if we will but listen. God gives us what we need, gives us everything we need to do the work that we have been called to do. We have sufficient grace through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what Paul says. We have sufficient grace because God gives it, gives this incredible gift. Now, like Paul, what we are called to do may make us uneasy, take us out of our comfort zone, may call us to make changes that we really wonder about. The work may look difficult or hard or different, but folks, we can get through it all because we have our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
And because we also have all those folks who have helped us stay grounded in our faith, who have been there since the baptismal vows, who said, yes, I will teach that Sunday school class. Yes, I will do the children's choir. Or yes, I will definitely do what I can in teaching adults. Sometimes that's the worst. We have all these folks, all of you folks, that help keep us grounded in our faith, understanding who we are and whose we are. So just like Paul, we are called by God. We're sometimes tasked with difficult things. But God gives us everything we need to perform those tasks, to do that work, and to share God's love throughout the world. Amen. We are now at our time of prayer. And um, I've been given a few names to make sure that we remember. And I've got to get to the right. And uh, are there any other particular prayer requests that, that you all want to share with one another this day? Yes, absolutely. I know. They, how many? They've got four now. Oh, they had two when I left this morning to, to drive up here. Yes, yes. I have been in prayer all morning. Yes, yes, for all of those. And and to tell you the truth, I I sit and I think about. I don't care where anybody is on the political spectrum. I really don't. But I'm sorry. We families that have been pulled apart for whatever reason. Um, children that are not with their mothers or their fathers. Um, I think of the children in Thailand. I think of the children at borders. I think of those that have been snatched off the streets in other places um, and frantic parents. Um, I, you know, I, I just think about, I have four children of my own and I just remember the panic I went into when I missed them at the grocery store and suddenly they were gone. So I can't even imagine what the parents in Thailand have been going through and those that at the border. So um, we pray for all children and the uniting of families this day as well and, and especially that everyone stays safe at this point coming out of coming out of that mountain. Boy, I tell you. Others, other things. Anybody else? Let us come to God in prayer. Almighty God, you taught us to pray not only for ourselves, but for people everywhere. Hear us this day as we pray for ourselves and for others in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask that you inspire the whole church with your power, unity, and peace. Grant that all who trust you may obey your word and live together in love. Lead all nations in the way of justice and goodwill Direct those who govern that they may rule fairly, maintain order, uphold those in need, and defend oppressed people, that this world may claim your rule and know true peace. Continue to awaken people to the danger that we have inflicted upon the earth, Implant in each a reverence for all that you have made, that we may preserve the delicate balance of creation for all coming generations. 
Give grace to all who proclaim the gospel through word and sacrament and deeds of mercy that by their teaching and example they may reveal your love for all people. Comfort and relieve, O Lord, all who are in trouble. We pray especially this day for the soccer team in Thailand and that we pray that all of those, all of them will come out of the cave safely. And we pray for the uniting of children with their parents wherever they may be in this world. We pray for those who are traveling this day, those that are headed on vacation or heading back, those who have to head out for new troubled spots in the world, those who keep us safe. Be with them all, O oh Lord, that all may be come home safe and sound and anew. We pray this day for all those who sorrow, all those in poverty, those who have been dealing with sickness. We especially remember Don Becker and his wife for Mike Jessup and for Maggie and for Genevieve. We pray, O oh Lord, that they might find comfort and health and that all those around them will feel themselves upheld in your arms and have the strength to do what is necessary. O oh Lord, we also know that there are others known to us whom we name before you in silence. Heal them in body, mind, or circumstance, working in them by your grace, wonders beyond all they may dream or hope. Bring to our remembrance all those who, having served you on earth, now sing your praises eternally. May their endurance give us courage and their faithfulness give us hope through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us when together to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join together in our closing hymn, number 738, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee.
love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the 